friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. I'm super excited for this video because I just love seeing the process of a roll cage being put together, especially one where the chassis is being 3D scanned. As much as you guys love learning things, this is a learning process for me as well. This is the first time I've seen a cage get built from beginning to end utilizing this process. I think it's super cool, but unfortunately I didn't get to see this process in person. So in this video, you're gonna see a bunch of video clips from my guy Kyle. He's the one that did everything as far as the cage. Now he did mention, and he wanted to stress that he isn't a professional, he doesn't do this every single day. He just has access to the tools, he knows how to use them, and this is his first time really going through this entire process himself as well. Again, Kyle is part of the team, he's gonna be driving the car as well. Most of these clips are gonna be from him, but I'm gonna be the one editing. So it should feel familiar, but you're gonna see a different face. Once again, the chassis is gonna be 3D scanned, that's kind of where we start inside this video. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to build this cage a little differently. So we're actually going to try to 3D scan the whole interior of the car. Obviously, this is not necessary. This is just a tool I had available to me. So we're going to give it a try. Uh, the advantage is, you know, we can scan the whole inside. I can draw the whole cage up on my computer and that way we can iterate, make changes, come up with the final design before we cut any material. So less scrap and We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I'm, like I said, I've never tried this before. So I've already started scanning. I'll show you that right here. So you can see the driver B pillar, the roof skin, and the uh, rear. And the resolution doesn't need to be perfect on this scan. It's more of just a boundary boundary condition, so I can set the cage in there. But um, so I'm gonna keep scanning, and I'll uh, show you guys as I get further along. So I finished scanning the TSX. Um, so this is the final scan. Again, I don't really need everything here. Um, really just need the B pillar, the A pillar all the way down, the rear strut towers, and roof skin, and this uh, sill plate would be nice to have too. So this is the final scan. I was able to export this, upload it into SolidWorks, and then start working on the cage, which I will show you. So this is kind of where I'm at with the cage design. Um, I might change up the door bars here, try to get rid of this S-bend, um, but, but we'll have to go through the B-pillar. Trying to keep the cage as close as I can to the chassis. Ideally, it would be touching the chassis and we'll be able to weld it directly to the chassis. Avoid any gussets. That's, again, that's just added time, added weight. Unnecessary if you can get the cage directly touching the chassis. Um, I've got this dash bar going directly through where the OEM dash bar was, so that'll work well. Um, that main hoop is set pretty far back just based on this is a sedan and the seating position was actually past the B-pillar, so we set that main hoop pretty much all the way back. Today is day one of the actual roll cage build. So you saw previously we were uh, scanning the car, we were drawing it up on the computer. Currently I have a complete CAD model and drawings made for all the bends that we need. So today we're actually gonna start bending. Um, so I got the two bender set up. I got all the material outside. For this roll cage, we're doing a uh, inch and three quarter 095, which is I think believe 13 gauge. 1020 DOM tubing. And that's just based on the weight of the car and the series we're running in. That's the tubing we need to use. Step one for me is always to start with the main hoop. So let's 
one of the trickier bends and it's kind of the main focus point for the cage. So what I'll do to get started, especially when I'm putting a new die in there, anytime I switch dies in that two bender, I'll just do this. Basically calibrate the uh, setup. So I got a couple sample bends here. I got a 90 degree, I got a 69 degree and a 23 degree. So this helps me with uh, a couple things. First of all, calculating your spring back. So for example, on this 23 degree bend, I bent this to 25 degrees. So there's a two degree spring back on it. On that 69 degree bend, I went to 73 degrees. So there's about a four degree spring back there. The second thing this helps me with is you see all these lines right here. So I marked all those before I bent any of these tubes. And then I will line that up on the tube bender right at the face of the die. So this basically tells me where each bend needs to start relative to that tube die. Cause it's not exactly like this, right where the tube die just starts, the bend doesn't start for about another inch on all of these. So then what I can do is throw those numbers into my CAD model and that'll tell me exactly where each one of these bends needs to start relative to that bend die. If you weren't using CAD to do that, um, you pretty much do the same exact thing. So for example, on this one, which is the, one of the first bends for the main hoop. You would basically have that line. You'd have the sample bend. You'd throw it where you think it needs to go. And then I would basically transfer that line right onto the chassis on both sides. So I do that over there, over here, put that line out there. And then you can measure in between those lines to see the distance between your first two bends. All right, so I got the bender set up. I got my sample bends calibrating, if you will, the uh, tube bender. So now I got that first main hoop bend cut and ready to go. I got it marked out. So this one's gonna have four bends. So you got one, two, that's the center, three, and the fourth bend. Typically I'll start on the inside. So I'll bend these two inside bends first. So this one's gonna start here. It's gonna go 70 degrees that way. And likewise, this one's gonna start here and go 70 degrees that way. And then I'll do the outside two bends. So yeah, see how it goes. update on the main hoop so got it all bent up threw it in there um, just roughly shimmed and set in place right now it's really tight touching touching up there on the roof over on that side as well um, I have this kicked back at about a two degree angle kind of trying to match that B pillar yeah like I said it's just roughly set in place right now eventually there'll be a ledge that I'll build here and then this will get trimmed down so it'll be a little easier to move around. But now the CAD model honestly worked very well. Fits just like I wanted it to fit. So yeah, looking good so far. Next, we're gonna work on the A-pillar bars, which I think are a lot harder. I got four bends in that A-pillar bar and they're all like on different planes. See how the main hoop's all on one single bend plane. So it's a little easier that main hoop twists different bend planes between each bend. So a little trick here. So yeah, that'll be next. So I just wanna explain a little more on that A-pillar bar, kind of show it right here. So it's this bar, um, again, four bends in this thing. So I got one here, small bend right here, another bend right up here, and then final bend going back to the main hoop. Definitely could do this in just two bends. The only reason I'm doing this in four is I'm just trying to really hug the chassis so I can give as much clearance to the driver as I can. 
but yeah, definitely not necessary. You could really just do a bend down here and then another bend here straight to the main hoop. A little overcomplicated, but that's all right. I'll show you guys the drawing for that bend so I can kind of explain what we were doing earlier with the main hoop. It looks a little messy or complicated, but it's really not. So I got, again, the four bends. So bend one, two, three, four. So you'll see that first bend, we start out with a 62 and a half degree angle. And then that first bend is gonna start 21.92 degrees off the end. Again, giving me that one inch offset to compensate for the die. So basically just follow that. Um, next bend will be 14 inches off the first bend. And the twist between bends one and two, which is the harder part, is about 10 degrees. So then same thing, you go from bend two to bend three, 21 degrees and the twist between bend two and bend three is 20.64 degrees. And then that last bend, which that last bend I'm probably gonna hold off on until I'm gonna just throw it in there with the three bends, check it out. That last bend is really just to kick it over towards the main hoop a little bit. So might not be necessary, but I'm gonna just try it, but we'll see how that goes. The last bend is about 14.6 degrees and about a 48.92 degree twist off of bend three. So I'll try to show you guys how I actually bend that or how I'm actually gonna measure those things, but that's what we're gonna try to do. All right, so I got that eight pillar bar all marked up in the bender. So I got bend one line right there, bend two, bend three, bend four, all based on my drawings. I left the thing a little long because we're gonna trim it down obviously. Um, so yeah, the first bend is at 60, what is it? 62 and a half degrees. So I'm gonna bend that one to 66 based off the spring back. I got this little tool here that I'm gonna leave clamped on the tube the whole time. I also have it marked in case I do need to take it off. Um, but basically this is gonna help me with that twist in between bends. So my other protractor is dead, but basically this is set at zero degrees right now to the bend die. So that'll be the first bend. The next bend is a 10 degree twist offset that. So now I can just use that, basically set it at 10 degrees on the second bend and that should help me determine my twist. Okay, so we got that first bend in there. Now we're setting up to do the second bend. So I got my line lined up with my bend die, and then now I'm just figuring out the twist. So we need, let me show you the drawing again. We need between bend one and bend two, we need a 10 and a half degree twist. So this is the bend plane for number, for bend two. So we need that first bend to be 10 and a half degrees up. So again, I didn't move this. So now if we check this, I should have this set real close to 10 and a half. It's been the moves around a little bit, but so we're at about 10.2, real close to 10 and a half. So we're gonna run with that. And the next bend is only a four degree bend. So we're probably gonna go to about six degrees and yeah, should work well. All right, we got the second bend in there. Uh, about four degrees, we went to about six. It's right about at four. You'll see I did move this down. So basically before I bent anything, I put a mark in between each bend. So this is basically relating back to bend one. So now any twist off of this is relative to bend one. So I got the protractor zeroed on the die. And then we're at about 30.1 right now. So I might adjust that a little bit, but 30.1 relative to bend one. So bend three, we are supposed to be at 30.8 twist in between bend three and bend one. So 30.8, we're at about 30.1. Bend to angle of bend three is 21.3. So I'm gonna go to about 23.3. I'll show you guys uh, once I have that done. So I did test fit it with just these three bends. 
it's fitting really well so far. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that fourth bend in there. So I've got that set up. It's calling for 20.7 degrees. I'm at 20.4, that's perfectly fine. Relative to bend one. And the fourth bend is supposed to be 14.5 degrees. So I'm gonna go to 16.5, bend that up and uh, see how it fits. I got that last bend in there. Um, I just taped it up in there just to kind of roughly hold it where it's supposed to go. See it tucked up in there. Fits really well. See it's hugging this A pillar pretty much all the way up. Just got the main hoop set back for right now. Yeah, I just got this taped right here. But yeah, it's pretty tight all the way through. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be perfect, but it's pretty good. I need to trim it down there a little bit so it'll come down a little bit. See how that's kind of off parallel. So that'll come down a little bit and might tighten up. But yeah, super tight. See, adding that second bend right here just allowed me to kind of cut through here really tight and then up tight to the roof. And then it'll kick down and inboard a little bit towards that main hoop. So yeah, overall, Pretty happy with that. Pretty much trusted the CAD all the way through. Didn't really check it too much along the way. Just bent it based upon what the drawing told me to. So, sweet. A few moments later. All right, so I got both A-pillar bars done. Um, they're just sitting in there right now, kind of just taped up, held in place. Yeah, the second bar, the passenger side was went pretty well. I mean, it's just an exact mirror image of the driver bar. So the only difference would be is the twist in between bends is just in the opposite direction. Other than that, it's the exact same. I think this one even turned out a little better. The driver's side is really good, but this one just seemed to be even tighter, fit up there really well. So yeah, super happy with this. Again, I don't, I don't build too many cages. I do a lot of tube bending, fab and welding, but I've only done a handful of cages, so this just goes to show how valuable all that CAD data was, just being able to draw it up and base all the bends off of that. So yeah, my next steps, probably gonna start building the mounting plates for the A-pillar bars and the main hoop so that I can get those set in place. And then yeah, get the uh, A-pillar bars fabbed up, trimmed up to fit against that uh, main hoop. All right, guys, I'm pretty much going to stop this video here. It is turning out to be much, much longer than I anticipated, but that's not a bad thing. I like that we're going so in-depth into this build here. As you guys can see, we're not even halfway through this whole process yet, so this might be a two-parter, maybe even a three-parter, but we'll see. I initially wanted to put the roll cage build into one single video, but clearly it's gonna be a very, very long video, so I'm gonna break it up into a couple parts. I'm learning a ton from watching Kyle and Pete build his roll cage, so I hope you guys are too. But for now, we'll continue with this series next week so if you guys like the video go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you want to stay up to date with the roll cage and the rest of this tsx build go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions or comments go ahead and put them down in the comments section down below and if you'd like to share the video that definitely helps out the channel until next time stay safe stay smooth i'll see you guys in the next video